Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about the Ohm's law. So let's see what is Ohm's law here. Ohm's law states that the current I is directly proportional to the voltage provided the temperature and all other factors remains constant. Your current is directly proportional to voltage and at constant temperature and if any other parameters are there, all are constant. If you see the Ohm's law mathematically, we can write it as, here if you write the Ohm's law according to the statement, formula is I is directly proportional to the voltage. This is the condition. Here we can also write it as V is directly proportional to I. Okay, suppose if you know I value and the R value. Okay, we can write it as V is equal to I into R. V is equal to I into R. And if you know the value of V and R, if you know the value of V and R, Okay, we can, if you want to find the I value, I is equal to V by R formula we will use. And in the, in the last condition, if you know voltage and current, and if you want to find out the R value, so in this case, we will use the formula R is equal to V by I. Okay, if you know I value and R value, we use V is equal to I into R formula. And suppose if you know V value and R value in the given circuit, we will use I is equal to V by R formula. And you know V value and I value and you don't know R if you want to find out the resistance value, R is equal to V by I, we will use. Okay, here R is a constant proportionality. Here we are replacing R. V is directly proportional to I. If you remove the proportionality, we are getting R here, resistance. R is called as a constant proportionality. Now, if you see the VA relationship for a resistor according to Ohm's law, if you see the relationship here, we will get the graph like this. Okay. So, here in this graph, if we take the current on y-axis and the voltage on x-axis. So, here, here, if you increase the voltage continuously, the, there is a change in the current also the current is also increasing okay if if the if you increase the voltage there is an increase in the current also so that's why we will get the both are increasing uh, linearly that's why we will get the linear characteristics these characteristics we will get okay ohm's law is having linear characteristics ohm's law is applicable for only linear elements because if we increase the voltage the current is also increasing here these characteristics we will get only for the linear elements Next, if you see the applications of Ohm's law, if you see the application, this law help us in determining the voltage, current or resistance for the linear circuit, linear electrical circuit when the other two quantities are unknown. Okay, just now we have seen, uh, if, if you know only voltage and current, if you know voltage and current, if you want to find out the R value, this formula we will use. Okay. If you know the two parameters and if you don't know the other parameter, we will use this formula. Okay. Next, if you know I value and R value, and if you want to find out the V, the formula is V is equal to I into R. Next. If you know the V value and the R value and you want to find out the I value, that is I is equal to V by R. So, yeah, see the statement here. Voltage, this law is help us to determining the voltage, current or the resistance of a linear circuit, electric circuit, when the other two quantities are unknown. See here, in the, in the first case, voltage and currents are unknown. And by using this formula, we will find out R. Okay, here yeah. I and R are known quantities and we don't know V value. In this case, we will use this formula. Here, V value and R value we know and we don't know I value. To find out I, we will use this 
formula okay so these are the applications same application is to find out the unknown quantity if you know the any two quantities and if you don't know the third quantity so among the voltage current and the resistance we use these formulas okay next if you see the limitations of ohms law first limitation is ohms law is also not applicable for non-linear elements ohms law is not applicable for non-linear elements as we know that just now we have seen this law is applicable for only for linear elements okay linear elements means it are resistor inductor capacitor these are all called as the linear elements if we take the non-linear elements not in, like a diode and a transistor or is called as the non-linear non elements that's why this ohm's law is not applicable for non-linear elements you can see the one more limitation this law is cannot be applied to the unilateral networks okay a unilateral network as a unilateral elements like diode and transistor and etc which do not have same voltage current relationship for both directions of the current okay now if we see the some conditions of the unilateral elements that is unilateral or non-linear elements the diode and transistors are the examples suppose if we take the diode here okay this is the symbol of the diode for this diode if we apply the forward bias so here i am taking the battery okay it is, it is a positive of the battery and it is a negative of the battery it is a p terminal and it is a n terminal as we know the conditions of the diode here positive terminal of the battery p is connected to positive terminal and the n is connected to negative terminal okay so now we can say that the diode is in forward bias the diode is in forward bias in the in forward bias the diode starts increasing and simply we can say the diode is in on condition when the diode is in forward bias if we apply the voltage here okay if we apply the voltage there is a change in the current okay so in forward bias there is a change in the current if we increase the voltage okay up to certain point okay here yeah. now oh, if we change interchange the terminals here if we interchange the terminals here it is a negative terminal of the battery it is a positive terminal of the battery it is a negative and it is a positive and it is a voltage and it is a p terminal and it is an n terminal here negative terminal of the battery is connected to p type and the positive terminal of the battery is connected to n type now the ter either terminals are reversed so we can say that the diode is in reverse bias in reverse bias simply diode diode is in off condition here in the reverse bias there is no current flows passing through the diode in the forward bias if you increase the voltage there is a current passing through the diode here if you increase the voltage continuously there is no change in the current here there is no change in the current because in the in the reverse bias diode is in half if the diode is in half the current is approximately equal to zero here so that's why there is no linear relation here in the forward bias the diode is in on in the reverse bias the diode is off in the forward bias if you increase the voltage okay there is a change in the current but here in the reverse bias if you increase the voltage there is no change in the current okay these are called as a non-linear characteristics there is no linear relation between this voltage and current if you increase the voltage there is no change in the current here that's why this ohm's law is not applicable for non-linear elements because there is no linear relationship between voltage and current in the reverse bias there is a relation in the forward bias but there is no linear relation in the reverse bias hence we can say that this ohm's law is not applicable for non-linear elements okay so this is about the today's session of the ohm's law okay now if you see the example problem if you see the example for example problem is the flashlight shown in the figure uses a 5 volts battery and as a bulb with the resistance of 160 ohms when the flashlight is on how much current will be drawn from the battery this is a question okay is asking so if you see that this is a flashlight so it is having the battery supply voltage is 5 volts 
okay with the resistance of 160 ohms it is having the voltage is 5 volts and the resistance is 160 ohms when the flashlight is on how much current will be drawn from the battery is asking there is a 5 volts battery and which is having the 160 ohms of the resistance and what is the current passing through the battery okay if you see the circuit diagram this is a for the given uh, given problem if you draw the circuit the circuit will be like this so it is a dc supply it is having the voltage is 5 volts and the resistance of 160 ohms now if we calculate the current passing through the to the battery the drawn from the battery if we calculate we will get we know that here v value we know what is the v value here we are having v value is 5 volts okay and the r value we are having r is equal to 160 ohms okay just now we have discussed v is equal, if you know the voltage and the resistance the formula for the current is equal to to find the current i is equal to v by r okay i is equal to v by r is a v value is 5 volts okay and the r value is 160 ohms okay if we calculate this we will get 5 by 160 we will get 31 milliamps 31 milliamps here the current passing through the battery okay when we give the 5 volts of uh, 5 for the 5 volts battery if, if it is having 160 ohms of the resistance okay the current drawn from the battery is 31 milliamps okay if you don't if you don't know the current and if you know the voltage and the resistance this is the procedure to find the current i okay let's see the next problem the problem is find the supply voltage for the given circuit below okay if we see the circuit here in the circuit the current passing through the uh, circuit is i is equal to 3 amperes and the resistance already given it is a 15 ohms Suppose if you don't know the value of the voltage, the formula is here in the given problem, I is equal to 3 amperes. And R is equal to 15 ohms. Okay. Now, if you know the I value and the R value, the formula to find out I, V is V is equal to I into R. V is equal to I into R. Here, I value is 3 and the r value is 15 okay if we calculate here 3 into 15 v is equal to the voltage we will get 45 volts the answer for the question is 15 volts v is equal to 15 volts as the current passing through the uh, in the circuit is 3 amperes and the resistance of the circuit is 15 ohms and if you want to calculate the supply voltage the supply voltage is 45 volts okay like this we will find out the voltage if you know the current and the resistance value and if you don't know the voltage in the next problem we will see here find the resistance for the circuit given below in the given circuit i value is given the current passing through the circuit is 2 amperes and the supply voltage is 10 volts and if you don't know the r value so we will use the procedure is like this in the given problem the voltage is 10 volts okay and the i value is equal to 2 amperes and you know the voltage value and the current value and you don't know the r value okay the formula to find out r is v is equal, r is equal to v by i and the what is the v value here 10 and what is the i is i is equal to 2 here so now if we calculate here we will get R is equal to 2 10. So R value is equal to 5 ohms. Okay. So like this, we will find out if you know V value and the I value and you don't know the R value, this is a procedure. Okay. Like this, we will find out the unknown third parameter. So there are three uh, quantities we are having voltage, current and the resistor. Suppose if you don't know the outer among these three quantities, if you don't know the any one quantity by using Ohm's law, we will find out like this. Okay. Resistor index, uh, sorry, uh, voltage, current and the resistance. Out of these three, if you don't know any one quantity. So we know the formulas, how to use it by using the formulas and we have seen. Okay. This is about the today's session. In the next class, we will discuss about the further about the Ohm's law. Thank you.